Good evening and welcome to Temple of Faith, Church of God in Christ, our virtual Bible study. We are just so glad that you have decided to tune in on tonight. Those of you that are watching this video through our live stream or those that are listening in on our conference call line, we just thank God for you on tonight and we praise God that you are with us. We are tremendously excited tonight because we are starting our new series. We are bringing Sunday school to Wednesday nights. And we are looking forward to our first lesson tonight. It is lesson number five, uh, dated October 3rd, 2021. What we are going to do, for those of you that have the Power for Living uh, Sunday School books, these are the books that you will need to follow along with us. You can also Google the Sunday School lesson for uh, Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, and you can access the lesson online. We want to encourage those of you that are members of Temple of Faith, Church of God in Christ, to pick up a Sunday School book in our uh, church office on the first level. Uh, again, stop by the church and pick up a Sunday School book um, in the first level office uh, here at the church. And we just look forward to learning and growing as we bring Sunday School to Wednesday night as our current series. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight. We're just so excited that we could come before your throne. God, we praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up on tonight and we praise your name. God, you are worthy to be praised. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you be with us, that you share with us on tonight a fresh revelation from your word. Oh, God, we seek to know you better through our virtual Bible studies. God, you have given us such powerful words to live by. And so, God, we pray right now for everyone that our minds will be focused on your word, that we would rebuke distractions that would come to hinder us from receiving what you would have for us to receive on tonight. God, speak to us through your word. Bring clarity to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. If you would open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs, the 29th chapter, Proverbs, the 29th chapter, and we're going to be reading the 16th through the 27th verse, the 16th through the 27th verse. We're going to be reading it from the New King James Version. Whatever version you have uh, available, we ask that you follow along as we teach from God's word. Again, this is lesson number five. The date is October 3rd. It's from Sunday, October 3rd. We know today is Wednesday, October 6th, but we are bringing Sunday school to Wednesday night. Our subject tonight is an ordered life. Those of you that are taking notes, um, please write down an ordered life, a ordered life. The Bible basis is Proverbs 29, 16 through 27. The Bible truth is God calls us to trust in him as our source for an ordered life. What is a ordered life or what's order? Order is stability, it's harmony, it's peace, tranquility, uniformity, symmetry, or sequence. God wants us to have a stable life. He wants us to have a life of harmony and peace. He wants us to have a life of tranquility. He wants our life to be uniform with the word of God, which is the Bible. He wants our life to have some symmetry, you know, things that will fit together. We may not understand or always understand or just occasionally understand how the different events in our life fit in with God's plan for our life. 
God wants our life to have some sequence, some things to happen in order. If this happens, then this, we should be able to expect this, <coughs> excuse me, to be next. So our lesson tonight is an ordered life. And our memory verse is, it's found in Proverbs 29 and 25. It says, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. The aim of this lesson tonight is by the end of this lesson, we will know the relationship between a order, orderly life and trust in God. The more trust we place in God, the more orderly our life will be. And we will feel what it means to live an ordered life and that each of us will learn or know how to create a strategy for life based on godly principles and how to take those godly principles and to apply them to our life to bring order, stability, harmony, tranquility, uniformity, symmetry, and sequence to our life. That is the aim of our lesson on tonight. Again, our background scriptures. This is um, the scriptures that you read before we come together, before we come together to uh, attend Sunday school on Wednesday night. There will be some scriptures that we will be sharing with you that you should read in preparation for um, our virtual Bible study on Wednesday night. This week, the background scriptures were Proverbs 28, 1 through Proverbs 29 and 27. So it was actually two chapters of Proverbs. Proverbs the 28th chapter and Proverbs the 29th chapter. And you should read and incorporate the insights gained from the background scriptures into your study of the lesson that is coming ahead. Let's read our lesson scriptures for tonight. Proverbs 29, 16 through 27. The Bible says, When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous will see their fall. Let me stop right there. When you read the book of Proverbs, you need to understand that that's what it is. It's a book of Proverbs, of wise sayings. It's full of wisdom from King Solomon. Understand that you won't, uh, as it is with other books of the Bible, there will not be, they are not in chronological order. There's not a, a storyline that goes through the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, you can read it in multiple settings because King Solomon, when he was writing the book of Proverbs, he was just writing different nuggets and he was just dropping different nuggets on us. And so as you read this lesson text on tonight, understand that you may not see a direct connection from one verse to the next, but what you should see and what you should understand is that you should receive some nuggets of wisdom as we read each verse. The first verse, again, verse 16. It says in the New King James Version, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous will see their fall. Correct your son and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give delight to your soul. As we continue reading, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There, there is more hope for a fool than for him. You see what I was referring to? Each verse is a nugget of wisdom. Let's continue reading. Verse 21, he who pampers his servants from childhood will have him as a son in the end. An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgression. 
A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. Those of you that are joining us, we are in the 29th chapter of Proverbs. We are reading right now in verse 25. Proverbs 29, verse 25. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. Our last verse, verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, and he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Our subject, a ordered life. Why does our lesson contain those verses? What we need to pull out of what we just read, and we will go through this verse by verse in most instances, we need to pull out the nuggets of wisdom that King Solomon has included in the 29th chapter and apply them to our life, which will bring us an ordered life. Again, an ordered life is a life of stability, a life of harmony, a life of peace and tranquility, a life of uniformity, symmetry, and sequence. If you want a life that is ordered and is structured, follow the word of God. The book of Proverbs, as our book says, reveals two major themes, wisdom and folly. You should see a theme as you study the book of Proverbs, you should see a theme of either wisdom, which is the right thing to do, or folly, which is the wrong thing to do. Wisdom, quite simply, is knowledge, understanding, discretion, obedience, and instruction based on God's word and reverence for God. Again, it's knowledge, understanding, discretion, obedience, and instruction based on God's word. We just read God's word, and we're going to look at instruction that comes from the 29th uh, chapter of Proverbs, the 16th through the 27th verse. Folly, hear this closely. Folly is everything that contradicts wisdom. So you will see a contradiction. You will see how to live a disordered life. If you live a disordered life, you are living a life that contradicts sound wisdom. Hmm. You are living a life that is contradictory or opposite to the word of God. There's a life need in tonight's lesson. It is that we will recognize, hear me closely, that we will recognize God's plan for our lives is superior and in contrast to the world's sense of order. Oh, do we know anyone that has a life that is in total disarray, a life that is filled with instability, a life that there's no harmony, there's no peace, there's no tranquility, there's no uniformity to their life, they're living a life that is completely half, half, haphazard? They are living a life of folly. When you have stability, when you have sequence and symmetry, you are living a life of wisdom, a life of order. Praise the name of the Lord. Solomon's wisdom. Again, because Proverbs was not generally written, memorization was an effective way of teaching and learning these Proverbs. The short, concise phrases that we've read and that I talked about, they comp comprise Proverbs and they lend themselves to revealing and re remembering divine truths. Woo, praise God. We want to live a life that is orderly, 
that is line, aligned with the will of God, we need to learn these proverbs. We need to learn these, these uh, uh, words of wisdom. Hmm. Live by words of wisdom, not words of folly. The book of Proverbs teaches that a moral individual recognizes the immorality that exists within society. When we are living an ordered life, we recognize that there are situations that are not being handled or managed according to the word of God. And when that happens, we understand that that brings disorder. That brings disorder in our lives. Immorality is more pronounced when sin flourishes and moral decay increases. Such times demand fidelity to the word of God. Anytime there's a deficiency in hearing the word of God, it leads to rebellion and it leads to a need to return to the word of God. In Proverbs 29, the just and the wicked are contrasted. That will become clearer as we dissect these verses one by one. The just and the wicked are contrasted. The first part of Proverbs affirms that when the wicked are multiplied, transgression thrives. The more wicked, the more disorderly that uh, people are uh, living their lives in a disorderly manner, the more that wickedness and sin will thrive. Regardless of how much wickedness spreads in the land, God says, in the end, right will win out. Truth will prevail. You want order in your life? Speak and live truth. Listen to truth. Live your life by truth. And you will have order in your life. Proverbs provides numerous references to discipline within the home. This advice is as good at that time as it is in this time. We need discipline in the homes. You know how people learn to live an orderly life? Generally, it's based on principles that were taught to them by their parents. So often, we see adults living disorderly lives because they were never disciplined and taught structure as they were coming up as juveniles, as children in the home of their parents. Discipline should start in the home so that as we grow and develop and become adults and launch out on our own, we will understand what an orderly life is, what a structured life is, what is acceptable in society, and what is not succept, uh, acceptable. What is acceptable according to the word of God, and what is not acceptable according to the word of God. How do we learn what is acceptable through the word of God? We have to have revelation. We have to understand what God wants from us. We have to understand what God is requiring of us. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at our scriptures. When you look at verse 16, what verse 16 is saying is when degenerates, those that are living a life of folly, take charge, crime runs wild. If you have disorder, if you have those in leadership that are not living stable lives, instability is the fruit of the leadership. Instability is the fruit of the, the lives that are being modeled for us. But the righteous, the Bible says, will eventually see the collapse of a society that is being led by degenerates, a society that is being led by the unwise. 
verse 17 says, discipline your children. You'll be glad you did. They will turn out delightful to live with. You will understand that you will see the results. You will be able to sit back and reap the benefits of raising your children and influencing your grandchildren because you should not be raising your grandchildren. Your children should be raising their own children. But you should be influencing your grandchildren. They will turn out delightful to live with. If people can't see, look at verse 18. If people can't see what God is doing, we will stumble all over ourselves because we won't know direction. We won't know how to make right decisions. But when we attend, when we are faithful to what God reveals for us, the Bible says, we are blessed. You want to live an ordered life? Live according to the word of God. If you want to live a blessed life, live according to the word of God. It takes more than talk. Verse 19 says, a servant will not be corrected by mere words, but through though he understands, he will not respond. You may be a business owner, owner and there may be disruption in your business. Your business may be in disarray. Turn to the word of God and listen what the word of God says. A servant will not be corrected by mere words. It's saying there, it takes more than just talk to keep your employees in line. You've got to have structure. <laughs> You've got to uh, get your employees to understand that there are consequences to their behavior. There are consequences. If they fail to follow the proper uh, procedures, policies, and rules that you have set in place as the manager, as the owner of your business, they need to understand that there are consequences. Just talking, the Bible says, won't keep them in line. Mere words go in one ear and out the other. Verse 20 says, watch the people who always talk before they think. If you want a ordered life, you've got to think before you speak. You can't just talk everything that comes to mind. You can't say everything that comes to your mind. You can't say everything that comes on your heart. You can't uh, uh, have a response to everything someone says to you. Sometimes you've got to keep your mouth closed if you want an ordered life. The Bible says even the simple are better off than those that just fly off at the handle, those that can't control their tongue. Verse 22 talks about people that are angry all the time. It says, angry people stir up a lot of trouble. The intemperate stir up trouble. Mm, the hotheads. Verse 22 is talking about hotheads, prideful, not humble in spirit. It brings disorder to your life. If you're a hothead, it brings disorder. If you have an unbridled tongue, if you have an out of control temper, it brings disorder to your life and you need to ask God to help you get your temper under control. You need to ask God to help you get your mouth, your tongue under control. Mm. Verse 24, whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth but reveals nothing. If you become involved in wrong, you become involved in criminal activity, even if you are associated, even indirectly, you become soiled by it. It disrupts your life. The Bible says you become an enemy to yourself, that when anytime you are an enemy to yourself, you are fighting against yourself. You are defeating yourself. You don't want any actions in your life to be self-defeating. Don't be your own enemy. It says when the victim cries out, you'll be included in the curses. You're connected. You're associated with someone that is doing someone else wrong. You become connected 
with them. You become included in whatever consequences follow from that behavior. Mm. For some of us, verse 25, it speaks to those of us that our life is controlled by what other people say. It says, look at it. The fear of man brings a snare. You, your life is out of order because you are overly concerned about what other people say about you. <laughs> and so anytime we step outside of the will of God for our life, our life goes into disarray. Don't allow what other people say cause your life to go in disarray, verse 25 says. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. It's better to obey God than man. It's better to listen to God than listen to man. You want a life of tranquility, a life of humility, a life full of joy and peace, an ordered life, a sequenced life, a structured life, follow what God says, not what man says. That's what verse 25 is teaching us. I said that's what verse 25 is teaching us. Verse 27 is teaching us to have an ordered life. Good people can't stand the sight of deliberate evil. It says an unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, to the righteous. The wicked can't, but the opposite is true. Remember wisdom versus folly. The opposite is true for the wicked. They can't stand the sight of a, of a well-chosen life of goodness and peace and harmony. They are jealous of that. They are envious of that. Good people can't stand the sight of deliberate evil. You feel like something must be done. You cannot hold your peace. You cannot hold back and stand by in silence when others are being mistreated. It disturbs your spirit. You cannot have a ordered life and live a life with a disturbed spirit because of what you see was going on around you. Everyone, regardless of position or status, requires discipline to recognize how to behave and to speak in civil ways. You need someone or something as a model of right behavior. God has given us the model of right behavior through his word. We need to consider the implications of speaking before we think. I say it. We need to consider the implications of speaking before we think. When it talks in verse 22 about the hothead, Furious literally means heat. A furious person, as I said, is hot-headed. This is opposite of the person who knows how to control their temper and their tongue. Our question is, where in the family does God place the responsibility for discipline? In the day that the book of Proverbs was written, it solely fell on the father. However, in our evolving society, we understand that both parents work, that both parents have a responsibility to train up their children. Grandparents, those of you that are grandparents out there, there are times that you need to step in and provide some protection, security, and some discipline in the life of your grandchildren. Absolutely. You need to step in and provide that discipline. So as times have changed and the family structure has evolved, God is looking for us as believers 
to be responsible enough to step in as needed. And it, it, does, it just is not limited to our family members. Here in the ministry, we should be stepping in into, into the lives of all of our young people, all of the children of our ministry, to make sure maybe that parent needs some assistance. We should be stepping in. I said we should be stepping in. What qualities do you find in the verses that we read on tonight? That's in our Sunday school lesson. Look at the qualities that you will find as you go back in your personal time. Look at the qualities. Look at the qualities. Another question we have is, or another aim is, that you should plan a strategy. You need to take a step or two back, review where you are in life right now, and see where you are. Are you living a life of wisdom or folly? Are you living a life of wisdom or folly? What can you do? As we bring our lesson to a close on tonight, what can you do? This week, our lesson says that we should pray that we will increase our trust in God and that we find more security in our life through God. Number two, we should study scripture on God's unchanging nature. Number three, make a choice to live a ordered life based on godly principles. Make the choice. Make the conscious choice to live a life that is based on godly principles. And remember that today's lesson reminds us to trust in God, to have that sense of security we need in life. By believing on his promises, we can wholeheartedly trust him to bring order to our life. We've got to trust God to bring order to our life. As you dig a little bit deeper in your personal study time, our lesson suggests that you ask yourself a question. How do we reconcile our society's emphasis on personal freedoms and doing their own thing with teaching us to have ordered lives and doing so ourselves? How do we contrast what we see going on around us more and more people are talking about my personal freedoms, uh, my personal choices. I have a right to make my personal choices, whether it impacts you or not, whether it has an effect on you or not. Is that biblical? Is that biblical? When the Bible tells us that we should love our neighbor as ourselves, and the Bible tells us that we should put the needs of others before ourselves. See, a lot of what is going on in this disruption of an orderly society is the society is getting further and further away from the word of God. Let's close tonight with the scriptures that you will need to read for next Wednesday's lesson. Ecclesiastes 9, verses 13 through 18. Next week's lesson will be titled, The Superiority of Wisdom. The Superiority of Wisdom. So study Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, the 13th through the 18th verse. We Pray that you were blessed tonight through the lesson in ordered life. Bring structure and order to your marriage, to your relationships, to your, your workplace, to your home, to your family environment. You want a ordered life. Live a life of wisdom versus a life of folly and study these verses that we shared on tonight. Proverbs, the 29th chapter, the 16th through the 27th verse. We praise God for the lesson on tonight. And we are excited that we are bringing Sunday school 
to Wednesday night. Again, we encourage you to pick up your book in the church office on the first level so that you can follow along with us. We certainly want to uh, thank all of you that continue to support the ministry financially. We want to give you an opportunity to, to give tonight. You can share a gift tonight through Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, or through Cash App. That's dollar sign, Temple Faith Church, dollar sign, Temple Faith Church, or through Givelify. Just search for Temple of Faith, Church of God in Christ in Kokomo. I know there's a number of you that you don't tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern time on Wednesday evenings. You watch uh, our virtual Bible study at different times throughout the week. And that is great. That is wonderful. We want to encourage you to share our teaching with your family and friends. Use it as a tool of evangelism. And so you have an opportunity not only to go back and revisit these lessons, you can also give at any time using those electronic platforms. Our lessons are also available on our YouTube channel. You can watch these lessons and revisit these lessons on our YouTube channel. It's Temple of Faith. Our YouTube channel is Temple of Faith. We want to encourage you to join us for worship on this Sunday at 12 noon. We are excited. We have a great guest speaker that is going to come this Sunday and share a powerful word with us. He has many life experiences. His life has been a, a roller coaster, a life of ups and downs, and he's going to come and share his testimony with us and share a powerful word from the Lord. So meet us here at the, in the temple. Here in the temple, you can join us in per, for in-person worship on Sunday at 12 noon. And then on Monday evenings, we encourage you to join with us for our weekly prayer call at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You can dial in to our uh, conference call number. There's no PIN number needed. Just dial in at 765-202-7098. If you want to connect with the church, you can call the church at 765-614-8745, or you can email us at templeoffaith2015 at yahoo.com. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. We look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday morning at 12 noon.